I think that makes sense. So, so this can now go into the freezer. I'd love to give you all one final tour. I am so excited because I'm about to jump on a meeting with the Wise Solar team and we're gonna chat all through our solar system. They have drawn up a digital plan of where we're having the solar system and what all the components are going to be like um, in that space. So I'll be able to visualize it and also see what Sam and I need to do in order to prepare for the installation. Super exciting. Can't see you or hear you. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Hi, yeah. how are you going? Craig should be joining us shortly. Alex is here next week, to trying to get into it now. Oh, no worries. Nice to meet you both. Look, <laughs> kind of a bit of a rough layout of what we're thinking. Cool. Um, trying to, try to model up a little bit of the, the kind of corner of the front. So, um, we were going to cut out a door so that. Uh, we can access the batteries and also to make it easier to install because my only concern with that design the way that the inverter sits with everything else on that um, on the metal panel is I'm not sure how we would get it in because would we have to kind of like lay it down and then lift it up into place Yeah, because where the posts are, like, that's that won't be where the door is cut out because otherwise we won't be able to cut it out, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's not like it's actually shoved over in the corner. Um, but yeah, we can definitely do the other and stuff further across. I think, I think that makes sense. So that way we only need to cut a door big enough for the battery system and then we can have storage beside it. That went really well. Those guys are so helpful. Huge shout out to Damien, Alex and Craig from Wise Energy. They are making the whole process, which is normally so overwhelming, just feel, it makes us feel like we're capable of doing it and that it's going to work when we're done and finished. So we're so, so grateful. The next things that I need to do is I need to make a cardboard cutout of where our wall's going to be and then that wall will be um, cut out of steel so that we can install it on the day just with some tech screws and some silicon. And then we also need to figure out how big of a door we can have uh, for the battery system so that it's easy to install the batteries and then be able to access them as well. So I got the measurements for all that and I'll be able to start on that. And they're going to do a bit of a redesign with what they have so far so that we can easily install it in. But as it stands right now, we'll be able to install the inverter side of things. It'll just be plug and play, which is amazing news. We'll literally have a wall, like we'll have a wall panel with all of the components already on there. And all we'll have to do is put it in there, wire it all up, uh, screw it all in, and then everything should stay put. So excited to have a solar system and this is all going to be done before Christmas like these guys are literally Santa Claus they're making dreams come true <laughs> yay all right it's raining I'm gonna go inside see you guys later I wanted to give you guys a real time update on our solar system because this is something that's kind of happening as we speak and it's important to keep you updated because things are going to move pretty quickly. I sat down and I talked to the WISE team, I talked to Alex, Damien and Craig um, over a Zoom call and they talked me through the plan of where everything was going to sit in our space. So now my job for them is to make sure that I have this space completely measured out and also um, create a bit of a model for them because they're going to help uh, engineer a wall for us that we can stick in there and then that way we can separate the battery system from the uh, inverter and all the other components since those two have to be kept apart according to the new regulations. So essentially there's going to be a wall here. The battery system will be 
in that cavity right up against the corner. We're going to have to cut out a door on the wall here, and then we're going to have to put a wall here. So there'll be a bit of storage space beside the battery, and then we'll have our inverter system over on this wall here. So we've done all the measurements for that. The only measurement we need uh, is for that wall so that they can fabricate it and then everything can be installed all together at once. So yeah, it's a huge space in there. We need it to go there, don't we? Yeah. All right, I got the trickier part done. There's a bit of a gap here, so I'd have to keep that in mind. And there's nothing to screw against here. So, I mean, this will definitely need to come out to there and then down. So I probably shouldn't have cut that bit. I guess with this type of wall, it'll get screwed into the pipe. And then they will create kind of like um, folded parts on either side so that we can probably screw it into there and then into the bottom. I think that will be the best approach for it. I think my goal of having lots of zucchini is officially coming true and it's one of my only gardening goals that seems to be coming to fruition. This one unfortunately didn't get fertilized so it's rotting away so that can be discarded. But this one looks great. Zucchinis are about the only thing growing in my garden and I did have plans to come out and work in the garden today, tomorrow and the next day, so this weekend. And honestly, that's not going to happen because the forecast for this week is a week of rain. So at this point, I'm honestly taking it as a sign from the universe, a sign from nature just to slow down in the garden not to focus on it that much because realistically at the end of December we're hoping to leave the property and so that really gives me a window of five to six weeks to grow anything to harvest and I don't know a lot of varieties of vegetables that take that long to grow. The few that I have tried to, things like lettuce and radishes, have been getting destroyed by wallabies and that's why I was going to dedicate time this weekend to fixing up the fencing around my gardens. But honestly, that energy is so much more useful on the bus. It's so much more useful with things at home, with turning the produce we are getting into beautiful recipes, um, which I'm so excited to use these zucchinis. It's been a while since I've had zucchini. Hello, my princess. Hello. Can you say hello? Hello. So I'm officially taking this as a sign. There will most likely be less and less gardening content, at least for the time being, while we're traveling and on the road, really trying to keep a garden going, even on this property, as we're trying to prepare to leave it, is just really unrealistic and is causing a lot more stress than it needs to. Gardening's not supposed to be stressful or hard to attain. It's supposed to be really calming and pleasant. So for the time being, I'm going to enjoy the harvest that I do get from it. I will continue to try grow things, but I'm taking the pressure off. 
and I hope you guys are okay with that. I'm back inside and I have some of that cream cheese mixture for our cob loaf left over from yesterday. This is way too delicious to throw out, but it was way too indulgent for us to eat all of it yesterday. So today I'm going to repurpose it into a new tomato and ricotta cheese tart. So it's going to be ricotta mixed with this mozzarella cream cheese mix. I don't even know if I need the ricotta. I might be able to get away with not adding a lot in. And then yeah, lots of fresh tomatoes on top. I do wish the tomatoes were growing in my garden. I do have a couple of young plants and hopefully we'll get some tomatoes before we move out at the end of the year. But yeah, I don't have my hopes held too high. Don't have my breath. What's the saying? I'm not holding my breath, that's it. So let's make my pie crust. I made the same pie crust for a quiche Lorraine last year right around Christmas time. So I'm making the same pie recipe now. I love this recipe because it is so easy. It takes one and a half cups of flour, a half teaspoon of salt, two and a half tablespoons of water, one large egg and 150 grams of butter. That's it. You mix it all together, freeze it, and then you can bake from there. So you want your butter cold and you want to mix it until it resembles breadcrumbs. I'll show you what that looks like if you've never done it before. Kind of squeeze the flour into the butter and like mush it up in there is the best technique for this. So like I pick it up and I just smush it. <laughs> it's easier to do in the bowl than out of. And it's okay if you've got some bigger chunks of butter, it's going to make your pastry really flaky, so it's not a bad thing. So as long as most of your big chunks are gone, this should kind of be the texture you're after. So it kind of looks like breadcrumbs. You can squeeze it together, but it really easily falls apart. Mix it until it comes together, enough for my hand to get in there. Which it pretty much has. Okay. So there's our pastry. I have a container, put the pastry into it. You can roll it out as well or just place it in. I just mash mine in, I don't mind. So this can now go into the freezer and in about 30 minutes, I'll take it out. You can blind bake this. Um, I'm just going to cook my filling straight into it. I have something a bit fun that I'm planning on doing for the bus windows in honor of Christmas. So stay tuned and you're going to see it unfold. So just so you know, this is called a chalk marker and it essentially allows me to draw anything I want on the bus and then be able to just wipe it off with water when I'm done and I don't want it anymore. So of course, I just have to decorate my window for Christmas since I have so many. I'll definitely have to show you this at night time, but I mean, that's the whole plan with this is that night time comes around i'll put some lights inside the bus and we should hopefully be able to see this design from the outside there's the lights inside i hope <laughs> next step is to slice the tomatoes 
and also salt them so that the moisture comes out. I have to apologize, this day was so scattered. There was just a lot of waiting in my recipe, so I kept trying to do other things in between, and the same goes with the rain, trying to pop outside when it eased, and then running back inside for cover when it began again. So this day is a bit all over the place, and I just hope you don't mind, that's part of Vlogmas, I guess. <laughs> I love this rain event. It makes it feel so cozy. Makes me want to start a fire, but it's too warm. <laughs> this is my favorite weather in our little forest here. I'd love to give you all one final tour of this property before we leave at the end of December. So I keep saying that we're going to leave at the end of December and if you didn't know, the homestead we're on currently is rented land. So we, someone else owns it and we borrow it and we pay their mortgage and essentially none of it goes back to us. But that's been the main reason why everything has been temporary for us and has caused a lot of headaches and a lot of trouble with having livestock like sheep and even with pigs, but ultimately it's led to a lot of really great stories, a lot of really amazing problem solving skills and a lot of resilience <laughs> in the process. We have laughed, we have cried, we have done all the things here on this property and we have felt so fortunate to call this home for however long that we have. It's been almost three and a half years now, it'll be four, Sam I think almost which is crazy to think about that this has been our lifestyle for so long and used to only be a dream that we would work towards so long ago and now now this chapter is wrapping up and we definitely know that in the future we're going to want to homestead again and in the future we're and no matter where we are whether it's on a bus on someone else's land on our own land no matter what, we still have this drive and desire. Ah, so scary. We still have this drive and desire to look after land, to be sustainable, to be conscious of our inputs and outputs in this world that we live in and to inspire others to think the same and just to be a bit more aware, conscious of what our impact is as humans and where we can help and support the environment and the land, the animals and the plants around us. But all that to say, I have absolutely loved being on this property. It is such a pleasure to listen to the bird call. In the morning it's extra special, in the fog it's like they all come alive and that's something that I think I would have personally never experienced had I stayed in the city. And I'm so grateful for, for us taking a chance three and a half years ago. So it's kind of, <laughs> it makes me always tear up. It's bittersweet leaving this property because it feels like we're leaving a dream that we have built for ourselves, that we have made a reality. But at the same time, it being temporary and something we couldn't afford to get ourselves at the end it was always inevitable that we would leave and we never imagined that it would be on a bus. <laughs> and that's, I think, exciting all on its own. But I'm really looking forward to the next part of the journey. By the way, I'm taking you guys through the forest walk we used to do so often until Eris got too quick for it and it would only take him ah, 10 minutes to do. So we haven't been doing this for a while. Isn't it insane? Like this is in our backyard. Whoever gets this property after us is so incredibly lucky because it is such a beautiful property with so much potential that we haven't fully been able to tap into because again, it is not our property and we have to be 
aware of what we do to it because it's someone else's. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to finish our walk and um, hope you enjoyed this vlog. It was, I guess, a bit more of a personal one and it's that's what I love about Vlogmas and doing daily vlogs like this is we get to share more of that personal side of us and I hope you like it. <laughs> and even if you don't, that's fine. This is such a nice reflective practice. I'm really looking forward to being on the bus next year and this being a bit more full time for us. We are planning to ramp it up to maybe three videos a week, but no pressure. As always, if we can't achieve that, that's okay as well. I feel like this episode or this vlog I should say really shows that this time of our life looks really different from what it used to look like. I haven't been able to get my garden to work this year. Our whole focus has been on the bus and on music and on work and finishing this huge project ahead of us. We don't have any animals on the homestead. You know, it looks really different this year than it did even last year or a few months ago. And I guess this kind of shows that when you tune into someone's life on YouTube, you can't always expect to get the same thing all the time. Our, we're human and our lives change and the seasons dictate this, our mood dictates this, different passions and projects that are happening around. So I just want you, if you've ever unsubscribe to someone because they've changed what they do in their lifestyle or perhaps they're not doing or sharing what they used to that's just how life and seasonality works and as gardeners I feel like we see this better than anyone we see the way that weather mood effort even different seeds the effect that they can have in our gardens I guess today more than any day this week so far or any day this year, I'm really feeling the shift and the change of homesteading as it was in the last three years to what bus life might feel like. And that's not to say that I won't start baking sourdough again. And I have used my sourdough starter in other recipes, I need to say that. And it's not like I'm going to stop cooking, but you know, my gardening life looks different. What I cook on my homestead looks different. What I prioritize day to day might look different as well. And it might to you as well. So if you're a homesteader, don't ever feel like you have to meet the expectations of how you were in the past or what you see your future being. Your life can very easily flow from state to state. And sometimes you might feel really proud and you know, it might come easily to you while other days it might be the hardest feat just to put on your gumboots and go and tend the garden. And I think that's so normal in human nature. And we really are so hard on ourselves as humans and we expect the absolute best from ourselves and of others every single day, every single minute. And that's just really not realistic. So if this is the excuse you need to just take a break and put your feet up, take it from me. That's what I'll be doing. And I'm not going to guilt trip myself for it anymore because we need rest just as much as we need to feel energized and feel motivated in our life. Rest is something that comes to us every single day for at least eight hours a day. And if you need a bit of extra time, Gosh, just take it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. This is your life and you should and can live it any way you want to. Hope that's helpful to someone out there. Doesn't that look so magical? I love it. It's so pretty.